Hello and welcome to the final full day of Professional Development Bootcamp for 2022. If you don't know me, my name is Corey Jo Biddle. I'm the Executive Director of Fuel Milwaukee. Fuel Milwaukee is an affiliate of the Metro Milwaukee Association of Commerce. So on the MMAC side, I'm the VP of Community Affairs, and I have to thank MMAC for their continuous support of the boot camp. So by now you guys know that we have over 1700 registrations. I'm so proud of that number. And I keep saying it because it's really amazing. It's more than I thought we were gonna do uh, when we had this in person, boot camp in person would be five days, 15 workshops, but there was a capacity restriction of whatever room we were in. So we would like tap out at a thousand registrations. Um, we just couldn't fit more people than that, but you all have really made this uh, grow and spread the word. And I just really wanna thank you all for being a part of this community of learning and helping to expand it into your own networks. I also wanna thank our sponsors. Returning as a presenting sponsor this year is Marquette University's Graduate School of Management. The Graduate School of Management is home to nationally ranked part-time MBA and executive MBA programs as well as world-class master's programs in accounting, applied economics, corporate communication, finance, management, and supply chain. The college offers graduate certificates as well as joint MBA programs with concentrations in law, political science, and nursing. So to learn more about those programs or how to apply, check out the link that Eric is dropping in the comments right now. Many thanks to Marquette University's Graduate School of Management for your ongoing support. Also returning as a supporting sponsor is American Family Insurance. AmFam is well known for their corporate responsibility efforts and their passion for coming together with customers, employees, and agency owners to drive positive economic, social, and environmental change for our communities. Check out American Family Insurance for all of your insurance needs. Their website is amfam.com. A newbie to the bootcamp family as a supporting sponsor is Mandel Group. Mandel has luxury apartment communities throughout the Metro Milwaukee area, including downtown, Shorewood, West Dallas, Wauwatosa, Brookfield, Hales Corners, Franklin, and Oconomowoc. So no matter where you wanna be, in the Milwaukee area, Mandel has the perfect, beautiful apartment for you. Learn more at mandelgroup.com. And finally, our returning media sponsor is Radio Milwaukee. Through music and stories created for a culturally open-minded community, 88.9 Radio Milwaukee is a catalyst for creating a better, more inclusive and engaged Milwaukee. Be sure to tune in to 88.9 Radio Milwaukee and visit their website, at radiomilwaukee.org. Now, the reason why we're here, we got over 200 people in the space right now because they wanna learn all about managing their work and life. We're all in that same spot right now. We gotta get some project management skills going. I want you to be comfortable. I want you to learn, grab your notebook, eat your, eat your lunch, go to the chat, communicate with each other, talk to us, give us feedback, let us know if you're inspired, if it's making sense, if it's resonating. But if you have questions, go over to the Q&A box. The Q&A box right next to the chat, that's the best place for you to go if you're gonna put questions. Of course, in the chat, people are gonna put questions. So that's why we have a chat moderator. Meet your chat moderator, Eric Kennedy. Hey, Eric, say hi to the people. Hi, everyone. Thanks again <laughs> for allowing me to be a part of it. Um, as Corey Jo will undersell herself, uh, another uh, kudos to her and her team and uh, for everything that she's done to inspire and educate, create awareness. And I would say that to save the best for last, but I don't want to be biased for Tasha, but that's a lot of pressure on her. But uh, thank you for everyone for taking time out of your day to really support uh, Fuel Milwaukee, especially Corey Joe and everything that she continues to do uh, to reframe the narrative and change everyone's perspective during this time. So you can tell Eric and I are friends, right? <laughs> And Corey Joe, you should definitely be a radio or TV like uh, like voiceover. The more I do this, I'm getting better at it. If you've had to, if you've gotten better reading scripts or just having conversation on the fly, moderating, having meetings because of this virtual world, 
go to the chat and tell us because I'll be there is no way that people have not developed skills in this time period. We got it's like sink or swim, right? You got to figure it out. So we definitely, we definitely did that. If you gain those skills, you tell us in the chat and maybe I'll I'll tap you as a speaker uh, uh, for next year. So listen, every year when we do professional development boot camp, we have trainers, coaches, speakers who have made their brands and their reputations on certain kinds of presentations. Maybe they've written a book. Uh, maybe they always do certain workshops. Maybe they're um, in education, whatever it might be. Those workshops always do well and people really, really connect to them. But I will say every single year, the workshops that have the best response um, are the ones that we come up with because we just think, hmm, what is it that I'm struggling with as a professional? Do you guys have any ideas? These are conversations. And then we go to people in the community that we know have uh, skills in this area and can teach us something. There is something about that really customized approach and reaching out to community people who know the work that really resonates with this crowd. It's like professional development from the people for the people. And that's what this session is. Latasha uh, Langdon has done a similar session for us before and it was sparked the exact same way. It was just a conversation and I called her up and I'm like, hey, you think you can teach this workshop? You might've been there. It was when we were in person at Manpower Group. And of course the room was completely full. Uh, Latasha is, I, I have all of her credentials and she knows she knows this stuff. Uh, and I asked her to kind of break it down for us in a way that we could um, really understand what is project management and how does it apply to our life and work? Are there different you know, approaches, pros and cons? How can we uh, use this? Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, I got to get all of this stuff out of my head and plan it out so I'm not running behind. And um, she's going to also talk about Scrum, which is an approach to project management that will help you move quickly while making adjustments along the way and a bunch of other stuff. I'm sure you guys will have questions. Uh, Latasha, thank you so much for doing this for us. I'm going to stop sharing now. So everybody can see you and hear from you and you just take it away. All right. So let me know if you see my screen. Okay. All right. Welcome everyone. So I am going to um, take the approach of, I don't want to be too technical because I don't want to talk over and I don't want to um, talk under. So I'm going to go kind of middle of the way with it but I will have my information at the end of the session. So if anybody has more specific questions or want to get more technical, then I will. But I wanted to take an approach where you have an understanding of it and then you can right after this workshop, apply something to your personal and professional approach. So um, as Corey, and Corey said, please, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the chat and we'll do that at the end. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So a little bit about me. These are, which is usually always hard to talk about me. So this is the hardest slide for me. The rest is easy. But these are some of the places that I have worked. Time Warner Cable, which is now Spectrum, Marcus Hotels and Resorts. So I did not work in the movie section. I actually worked in the hotels. And so I did hospitality, which is a, a great and fun industry. Johnson Controls, Tricep Solutions, which some of you may know as Funjet or Mark Travel, um, and currently at FIS. Right here, Divine Destinies. I am also an entrepreneur, so I have my own business where I do workshops and facilitation for youth and young adults, and it's all about just providing them exposure to make better decisions, because if you are exposed to more, then you can do more. And that's what I do in, in everything and including this is just educate you so that you can make better decisions. Also, again, teacher, facilitator, workshop presenter. Um, I graduated from MSOE. I am also an adjunct tra trainer for MSOE where I teach project management and scrum as needed. I have an MBA from Cardinal Stritch. I love to travel and I love you. So that's a little bit about me. And again, 
questions about that, I'm usually an open book. I'll also take those if you put those in the chat. So let's get into it. So out of this workshop, um, what I'm hoping everybody will get is an understanding of project management, an understanding of the Scrum Master role. This is one that some people have heard or some people don't know exists. And it's like, well, what is it? What is the difference? So I explain this to what is Scrum? the difference between Kanban and Scrum and applying Scrum to your personal success. So these will be the high items that we'll, we'll go over. And then Corey and Eric, if you all can keep me honest with time, let me know if I need to speed up or slow down. So if this is something, and Eric, if you could help me with this, I just wanna get an idea of how much people know about Scrum so then I know how high and how low to speak. And I'll just take the average. So if everybody can go to the chat and just put one, you've heard of it, five, you're pretty knowledgeable of it. And some of you may recognize Scrum as Agile and I'll explain that. And I'll give a, I'll give a couple minutes What is it running? Yeah, we got some zeros in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. It seems like uh, a lot of people have heard of it though. I have some sort of knowledge a little bit, Tasha, but a lot of zeros as well. So okay, so we'll probably say, but us between between zero and three is where yep. most. Okay, most yep. okay, good to know. All right, great, perfect. Point work zero five is one of them too. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what is what is Scrum? What is project management? So some of you may have heard of Agile. That's kind of the buzz where you hear either Agile and you hear project management. And Corey asked me a good question of, are they different or are they the same? Which is, I think, a great question. So you have project management mythology and they're both project management. It's just a different way of doing it. So Agile is a way of doing project management. And then you have the straight project management, which some of you will have or recognize as waterfall. So you'll hear people say waterfall. And I'm going to explain these terms. I just kind of trying to set it up. So agile, if you have somebody doing agile, you'll have them as a scrum master, which is the role that I play. With project management, you'll have the person that is over things referred to as a project manager. I actually do both roles. I've done both roles. I'm certified in both. The under agile, it breaks down even more. So project management, you'll hear waterfall and that's usually all you'll hear. Agile, you'll hear Kanban, Scrum, Extreme Programming, Crystal, and Dynamic um, Systems, which, which is called, sometimes called Dynamic Programming. We're gonna talk about con Kanban and Scrum and those are the most popular that you hear in industry, which is why I have those bold, not that they're better, but they're the most commonly used. So um, that's just an overview and I'll go more into it now. Is there any question before I go, any questions on this side? I don't want to lose anybody in the beginning. Tasha, what, 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 what website would you kind of defer to for a little bit more information that maybe I can share while you're talking with uh, these two? Uh, so I'm going to give you the website at the end. I have a, uh, four, three to four websites that I can share that kind of really breaks down the details. Okay. But I think after this, then people realize which, set, which one they want to get more on. Awesome. Okay. All right. So visually, this is the difference. So the top will represent project management. So if you look at it, you may not be able to see it, but it says requirement, design, development, testing, and deployment. And waterfall, it has to be, I can't do B until I do A. So it, it's a stair that one has to be done before the other. So that's waterfall. And agile is cyclical. So you do all of the things that you do here, you keep repeating it. The reason why more companies are going to agile and you see it more in development, but there are other companies that are adapting it. You see it in a development and manufacturing. And the reason is, is because agile, the benefit is you catch your mistakes early and you're able to pivot early. 
because if I'm doing my testing and design, I know that it's an issue and I can go right here. Whereas in waterfall, you might not find it to here and you've wasted six months, you've wasted three months. So a lot of people are doing agile because it allows you to work faster, catch things quicker and pivot quicker. So that's the benefit of agile over um, waterfall. Honestly, I think the best environment is you have a mix of both because there's some times where agile just does not work where like if you're dealing with contracts or you're dealing with some of the things out of your control. So you will see companies that have a mix of both. But overall, this is the, the big visually, the difference between the two. Okay, the other difference are the roles. So with an agile or scrum, so when I say agile, I'm talking scrum or Kanban, you have a dedicated team. So I have a dedicated team of six or seven people that I work with all the time. Whenever we need to get work, our, that dedicated team works on it. We figure it out between the six or seven of us. With project management, you don't have a dedicated team. So the people come in and out based off of the need of the project you're working on. So I may have to go because they, they're not under me. I may have to go to Corey and say, Corey, do you have somebody on your team that can help me with this part? Eric, do you have somebody on your team that can help me with this part? And then I'm tied to their availability, I'm tied to what they have going on. Um, and but with both of these, you have as a project manager and as a scrum master, I have indirect control, which is the, car, the part of management that I actually like because I've done direct management is I don't, I don't write their reviews. I might give input, but I'm not doing that part, but I am directing the work and the task that they do. So that's the difference when you look at the, the roles. Um, scrum master, as a scrum master, I am a servant leader and I'll go over that a little bit more. Um, product owner, product owner, some of you may recognize that as a business analyst. So they're the ones that kind of really get into the details, what's going on. And then a development team uh, is are the people that do the work. All right. So here's a really quick difference. Um, waterfall versus sprint. So the waterfall was where I told you it's stair steps, A, B, C, D. Um, the cyclical that I was talking about is called sprints. You'll hear sprints, you'll hear iterations. And I have another slide after this, but your sprints are with agile, it's usually a one week, two week, three week, or four week. Does not go beyond that. The average sprint is usually that a company uses is usually more than two to three weeks. One week, you really can't get anything done by the time you get through everything. And then four weeks is a little bit too long. And we'll talk about this when we talk about our personal goals. So again- So, the, so the, in the sprint, you go through uh -huh. all the stages quickly? You go through all, everything that happens in that test design, all of that happens within that, that sprint. And then, and then you- do it again. So you're always doing that same thing, that same time. Yep. Um, again, project manager, they get assigned to the team. Uh, and the, with the agile, they call them self-organizing teams. So as a project manager, I may say, Corey, I need you to do this. Eric, I need you to do this. As a scrum master, I will say, hey, we need to build this house. What part do you want to work on? So you have more ownership to say what you're going to work on based on your skill. So that's why they call it a self-organizing self team because you figure out as a team, what's the best way you need to do the work and what time frame you can do the work. As a project manager, I may say, we need to get this done in 30 days. Um, that's why it's more directive, the scrum master, more facilitator. As a project, I, project manager, I manage the timeline. As a scrum master, I'm saying, when do you think we can get it done? So you really have more ownership and buy-in with the agile team. Um, more hands on management. I'm doing, I will be doing a lot of uh, kind of reporting, checking in, serving leader. What does my team need to get what they said need done? And then you have the, they call them phase gates or milestones. So again, this that stepping stone. I can't go to B. Are we done with A? Is this done in A? Is this done in A? We're not moving on until this done. So it's called phase gates or, or milestones. And then with uh, 
agile, you do have milestones, but you also have that testing. And one of the things was a demo. So I'm showing you, hey, you expert is water, you painted yellow. And then I'm showing you after the wall is painted, is this what you wanted? And that's why you could say, well, no, that's not the yellow that I wanted. Now I go back. So I'm not waiting till I paint the whole house and say, is this the color you wanted? And that's where it comes where you find the, the mistake or whatever is not expected sooner. Hey, uh, Tasha, someone asked, yeah. how do you work through the challenges of being agile? There are, like, is there a specific challenge? So uh, the question was, agile can be a challenge for infrastructure teams like DBAs, where there are not enough resources to be fully dedicated to an agile team. How do you work through those challenges? So the one thing is to make sure you bubble them up. Um, there are some challenges with, like I said, I think when you're totally agile in every environment, it's not meant for that. So it's a mix. So the one thing is bubbling up. The other thing is it's important that when you're breaking your work up and we're going to do that, I have like a kind of personal because I'm visual. So I'm trying to do as much visual as possible. But you have to break it up into the smallest pieces of work. So even with like a contract, it may be not reviewing the contract. It may be reviewing part A of the contract. So you know that I, you're not going to be able to maybe review a 100-page contract in two weeks and get the changes and everything. So it's breaking it up into to pieces. Doesn't always solve the problem, but it makes it easier to kind of break it up and get through some of those challenges, especially when you're dependent on people outside of your Agile team. So part of that team you have control over when you have to worry on third parties, that's kind of a way um, to do it. And then highlighting the task as a blocker. I hope that answered it. It didn't confuse. Okay. All right. Again, visually, so how do you manage the work? This is one example that it, it looks different. There's different tools that companies use for Scrum and Agile. Um, we use like, we use Rally now. Um, some people have heard of Trello. Another one is um, Jira. So those are some that you, if people that work with it, you may be familiar with those names. But this is how the work is organized. So you see you have these categories here. Um, these are the kind of common categories you may change a little bit. Backlog is this is what I have to do. To do, this is what we have to do. Um, so the difference between a backlog and a to-do is the backlog is kind of, you're putting it on deck. We're not going to worry about it, but this is upcoming work. Um, to-do, we got to do this, so we're going to maybe be doing it sooner. We're working on it. We're reviewing it, so whatever testing, whatever um, checks you need to do, and then now we're complete. So this is a visually of what a scrum board would look like. Combine. Combine looks a little bit like the Scrum. So with Combine, you don't have defined sprints. So Combine is, we have, you still have the backlog of the, the to do, the work in process, validator test, and then I'm done. But I don't have like, I need to get this done in two weeks. Because usually when you work in a, a Combine, um, you have things that prevent you from getting it done in two weeks, but you still need to manage the work. So I'll have, we'll have a visual of this. And I think for personal and well, for professional, personal, I use a Kanban board. I use a mix of a Kanban board and a Scrum. So I'll show you a tool um, to use that and I hopefully it'll make more sense. And then project management. So you see the big difference. So project management, you don't have necessarily have those two visuals. For project management, people are probably more familiar with MS Project. So MS Project is how people usually run a project or some even Excel. So with, with that, you have these five phases that you always have in a project. This also happens in an Agile, but they look different because you're doing, again, those sprints and iterations. So when, you, when I say the waterfall, I can't, until I get... This approved in the charters, this is what I said I want. And you're saying, yep, that's it. 
So it's a requirements approval. But until I get these, I can't start planning. I can't start working on anything. Even if I think I know what needs to be done, I can't start doing it until I get all of these mapped out and rolled out. So that's the difference. In Agile, I don't have as many of those stop gaps to keep me from going. Does that make sense? Is there any questions from that word? Okay. All right. All right. So this is where I'm not going to get too technical, but if anybody wants more information, then I can I can break it down. So in Scrum, you have what they call as ceremonies. And these happen. So when I had that that cyclical, this happens every cyclical. So I'm going to use two weeks just to keep us kind of in control. We're going to do two weeks. So every two weeks I'm doing this. Every two weeks. So I have sprint planning. My sprint planning is I'm planning to work. I'm planning what work am I going to do in this two weeks. A daily scrum, at first when I started scrum, I was like, this is ridiculous. Because you, you meet, I meet with my team every day for 15 minutes. And so I'm like, every day for 15 minutes? What is we going to get done in 15 minutes? But it's actually very, very beneficial. In the 15 minutes, you are really in sync. What did I do yesterday? What am I going to do today? And what roadblocks do I have? Every person answers that. So it hides that if you say, I can't get this done because I had this. Well, it should have came up in the meeting. And as a scrum master, it's my responsibility if somebody says they're having an issue that I help remove that roadblock. Or if they say, I don't know what I need to be working on or they're not working on something, I should hear it in a daily standup. So it allows you to immediately resolve the issue. Sprint reviews or demos. So this is the work I did the last two weeks, I'm demoing to whoever my business person or whoever asked for the work. And they're gonna tell me, yep, I agree. No, you need to change it. That's where they're giving their input. And then the retrospective is also a, a very good um, ceremony because in the, cer the retrospective is only for you and your team. Nobody else is there. It's a transparent, honest, open conversation. Again, you're asking three questions. Uh, what did we do well? So what did we do well in the last two weeks? What did we not do well in the last two weeks? And what do we need to improve on? And this happens, so the whole two weeks, this happens. So these times are, with Agile, a lot of everything is time by, meaning you shouldn't go over that time. So your split planning for two weeks may take four hours. Doesn't take me four hours, but as you get mature with the team and the work, it can, it should not go over four hours. So these are your max times. So the events I mentioned, you can have a two week, three week, one or four weeks. So these are the times. And like I said, most people, I think the average for most companies is the two to three weeks. So like I said, I can give more details later if anybody has that or the sites that I provide at the end will kind of show you exactly what that, that looks like for this for me as a scrum master, happens every two weeks. So I have two teams that I manage. And for my two teams, I go through this process every two weeks, every day, every two weeks. Hey, Tasha, right. real quick. Yeah. Uh -huh. How do you do that in the virtual world right now that you've been able to do that? Someone asked. Well, so the thing is the virtual wasn't a huge change for me because half of my team, so one of my teams, 90% of them are in India. My other team, um, I have two that's in India, three or four that stay in different states. So we were always really virtual partially anyways. So nothing has changed with that. Um, it is it's better in person, but it wasn't a big shift because we were already doing virtually. The, other, the only thing that we've done that is not in this is because of virtual when we were in person, we would do team building. So we do, I have implemented, at least with one of my teams, I do a monthly team building and we don't talk about no work, nothing work. All we do is fun. So we play Jeopardy, we play Wheel of Fortune, we play Pictionary. So that's just something, and that's just a, you know, anybody can do agile or not project management. It's just a team building, just, you know, you have people that are at home alone. So that at least gives them a break of not doing work. But yeah, so virtually we do it through through teams 
and we do the same ceremony. How often do you win? Huh? How often do you win? Well, I don't play. I usually, as a scrum master, I facilitate it, and they all get a chance to play. All right. So when you're doing, because you have, and this, I think this goes to, I'm overwhelmed. How do I get it done? How do I schedule it? So in Agile, they have what they call the Fibonacci scale, which is these cards. Um, you may hear it called poker planning or poker deck. So in person, you know, everybody might have this, their own deck of cards where they will flip this number. Virtually, they do have these online virtually. So there's a couple um, virtual sites where you can still use it. And the big thing is the, the complexity is not just how long it's going to take me. It's the time, it's the complexity, is I have to research it, I have to go outside of my team. So when you are voting on a task, you're taking all of that in consideration. So if we say I need to um, I need to paint the garage or I need to paint whatever. What, you know, what do you put that as a complexity? And you will put one of these numbers. The other way to look at it, some, some people look at t-shirts because people are more visual. Everybody wears a shirt. Everybody can relate to this. So small, medium, large. So what is the effort like? Is this an extra large shirt? Is this a small shirt? That's another way to do it. So I, you know, I usually am interactive, but because we're virtual, we can, but I do have one piece that I think will help make it make sense. Because again, I want to make sure everybody can attach this to what does it look like personally and walk away. So this is the item and you all can do the chat. We'll just do a couple. So your task is you need to throw the item 10 feet and it's on a windy day. So windy day, you're throwing it 10 feet. We're going to use the Fibonacci. So we're going to use one to 21. If you have to throw this paper airplane, what would you all give it between a one to 21? And then Eric, you just, you just call, call, call out whenever you get okay. a lot of responses of what we're thinking. 10 feet, windy day. A lot of people are saying eight, 13s. One was very bold and said 21. Couple okay. people, 21. One I've been very transparent and said one, but okay. I would say between 10 to 13. Okay. All right. So Someone now. Said 22. <laughs> 22 is not an option. <laughs> okay. Next one. What about this? It's a, that, we have a rock. 10 feet, windy day. Someone asked, are you throwing against the wind or are you not? Good question, and that's exactly how it would go. We're throwing it against the wind. So that changed a little bit of answer. So you're still seeing some ones, some threes, uh, some twos. Okay. So, so a lot of one, twos, and eights, and five. Okay. All right. A feather. One said 48, 24, <laughs> 21. Okay. Now you have to throw this part, this um, gate, but this is the thing. This is tricker. I can get in the picture. It's a squirrel in there. That's a, that's a lie. Because <laughs> this is where the complexity comes in. It's not just throwing it. We got to throw the squirrel alive and it has to stay alive when it manages to get to the tempo in the wind. Some people are still very bold and saying 21 uh, between the 13s. Okay. Fives, 18s. Somebody said what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do one more. Oh, that was the last one. But so you understand when we're saying the task of how we're, how we're doing it. And that's how you would do it with Agile. So then you're deciding, okay, if this is going to take me 21, I'm not going to get this done in this two weeks. I need to break this up to something smaller. Yeah, Kimberly Miller said, not to call Kimberly Kimberly out, but he, she, or they said that 
they need to break down the task more. Yep. And so this is where it becomes, how am I doing for time? Am I good for time? Okay. So this is where it becomes reality for us. These are things we really got to do. So can I clean the house in two weeks? Can I clean the whole house? Or do I need to say, I'm going to clean two bedrooms. I'm going to clean all the bathrooms. I need to get an oil change. Okay, do I just need to schedule it? Because maybe they're out two weeks. So this is where it becomes when we start scheduling it and we want to do agile into our personal life. This is what it looks like. And I did that exercise so that you could understand um, the other side of it, how the numbers go. But this is, that, this is our reality. This is our every day. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk more about this. And this is what it looks like. Um, so the reason why I started doing Agile, cause I use Agile in my personal goals. I've been wanting, I used to do budgets at work and I didn't do budgets for my own personal. But I did like, I don't know, they were like million dollar budgets. I worked on them. And I'm like, well, I can do this at work. And they, the way that I'm doing it at work, why wouldn't I do it at home? And it's the same thing happened with project management and agile. I was doing it at work and it was successful. I'm like, why wouldn't I put this in my personal life? And that's what I started doing. So this is the way that an example of what it might look like. You want to buy a house by June. If you just look at buying a house, and you think of everything that needs to happen in that, it is overwhelming, especially if you never did it. It's overwhelming. Um, even like if you have to do credit, you can't fix your credit in two, in two weeks. So this is where it goes to breaking it down. So I broke these down to like two week sprints and you just start breaking it down. Okay, I need to open a savings account. That's something that you can get done. But if you just, just look at the buying a house and don't break it down, it becomes overwhelming. So this is an example of how you might use Agile for something bigger so it doesn't become overwhelming. And this can be anything. Like I, buying a house is a big thing, but you can bring it to something as small or big as you would like. And this is what it kind of looks like. And we're going to use a tool that can help you. You can use Word, you can use Excel, you can use project, whatever works for you. It's not the tool, it's what works for you and understanding it, how to break it down. Does this make sense? Before I go to on, does this make sense to anybody? Does anybody have questions on this? Or a anything of, that I talked about? A lot of people are saying that uh, they're very uh, appreciative of you sharing this and, and correlate it with personal goals. One okay. said, does this work for cleaning a junk drawer as well? Yes. If you can do the junk drawer in two weeks, or if you need to break it down and just say, yes, create my keep and not keep file, it works for anything. Rodell Washington said that he needs to use this for his next vacation when he takes Corey, Joe, you and I on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. All right. And actually, you know what, vacation, I had to do that for a vacation. I actually had to do something similar um, before COVID. I was able to go out of the country and I think I was gone for like three weeks. So I was like, oh, bills still gotta be paid. This has to be paid. I have to have this. So I did have to do a lot of pre plan to be able to enjoy my vacation because I wasn't doing anything on vacation. So yeah, it works for vacations too. And Edward, just a real quick, uh, Tasha, uh -huh. Edward said that best agile explanation I have had so far. Oh. Thank you, thank you. All right, so tips for setting the two-week goals. These are my personal tips. You can add, you can take away, you could disagree. This is just my, my feedback. So tips that I use for setting um, my two-week goals, don't put anything on there that I can't complete in two weeks. So, you know, you have to be, well, let me not skip ahead. Don't put anything that you can't do in two weeks. If it can't be done in two weeks, that's where you need to break it down. To something that can be done in two weeks to be that that larger goal. Break it down again, smaller manageable items. You can't clean the whole house in two weeks. Maybe you have a mansion. You need to break it down to what you can do in two weeks. I say no more than 10 tasks. It can be less than 10 because if your tasks are big, it may be no more than five tasks because that's when it starts to get, if you got a task of 20, 
that might be overwhelming for some. For some, it may work. I do 10 because after 10, I'm like, am I really going to be able to do it in 10 weeks? Because I still got to have a life. Like you still have to manage your, your fun and everything. Don't, this is something that we often do is we keep adding to our checklist. So my thing is, if I'm at 10, I can't add anything to my checklist. And that's how Agile works too. Once you commit to the work for two weeks, you don't bring anything else in. You wait to that next two weeks. So I can't add anything to my list after I've started it unless I complete 50% of my list. Because otherwise you look at it and you're like, I didn't get any, anything done. But you did, but you just kept adding to it. Keep in mind vacation, holidays, commitments. So during Christmas, I'm like, let's be real. I'm not working these days. I'm not working these days. So it's not working. I get it done in 10 weeks. It's, I mean, in two weeks, it's, what can I get done in five days? Because that's the only time I'm working. So you have to be realistic when you're setting your every two weeks won't look the same. Tasha, I hate I don't want to get ahead of what because you might have this, but do like do you just brain dump every possible thing that would have to be done to get something? Like how do you get all the tasks? If you are on a team, do you guys do that together or do you just sit down and force yourself to think through each point? So I I talk about it work and I talk about person. So work, we have projects and then the projects is we're breaking it down every two weeks. So when we're doing sprint planning, that's where we're looking like, hey, we need to get this done by this time. What do we need to get done this two weeks? So in our sprint plan is where we're planning what needs to be done. And then everything that can't get done in those two weeks is what goes in the backlog. So that's how it is in work. Personally, for my goals, what I do is I, I do a brain dump like, okay, what do I have done? Need to, I need to do the next two weeks. What do I have coming up? Like I had some workshops that I had this week. I had the field event. So my last one, I'm like, okay, what do I need to do to get ready for those that are happening? So I do the, I plan my two weeks and towards like the end of my two weeks. So my two weeks ends maybe Saturday or Friday or Sunday. I'm thinking about what do I need to get done in the next two weeks so that I can start on Monday. So I don't start looking or thinking about my next two weeks until I'm at the end, usually, of my other two weeks. Now, there's things like I know, okay, this needs to happen by the end of January or February. I already have that in my head. So I might put that as a backlog item so I don't forget, but I'm not going to worry about it until it's time to bring it in for my two weeks. It, Tasha, is it harder for you? I don't want you to speak for everyone, right? But is it harder for you to do personal versus professional when you're pointing out your two weeks or is it, do you find yourself more motivated for both or, or for me, for example, I know that for me personally, sometimes it's a little bit more of a, like a motivation factor, right? As mm -hmm. opposed to work, I have uh, these deadlines because if I don't hit those deadlines, I may get uh, written up, I may get fired, or I may get talked to, but like, it, unless you're, unless you're talking to yourself personally, right? Um, you don't, sometimes you may not have that accountability personally when you're doing goals. So how do you kind of I'm manage that? that? Okay. Um, it's become easier. The only thing that makes it hard for me personally is stand to the 10, stand to the 10 and then making sure that it's realistic. So I'm glad you said the accountability. So I do well with it because I have a lot of stuff going on. So to Corey's point, so that I don't get overwhelmed. I do it to manage my sanity because I have a lot of a lot going on. The other thing is I have a friend that's my accountability partner. So what we do is we both do our goals every two weeks and we use the tool that I'm going to show and we hold each other accountable and we'll talk. And she's like, I'm working on this uh, class. And I'm like, why? It's not in your goals. That's not when your two weeks, you need to wait. And she's like, yeah, you're right. Or you know, we'll look at be like, how are you doing in your goal? So we kind of do it like a midway check-in. So that's something that helps is get an accountability partner. And then that way, when somebody's doing something, be like, that's not on your list. You need to schedule the next, you know, the next two weeks. So we do that. Um, and that kind of helps push the personal piece of it to make sure you're staying on task. So I think here's something visually. I'm going to show you this is a free website that you can go to and it's really easy to use. You can play with it. So this is what I use for my, and there's other sites. This is what I use for my personal. 
And we're gonna use, like I mentioned, the Kanban. So this is the Kanban way. Um, and as you see, I did what we need, what we talking about doing a house. Those are my to-dos. So if you click on this, there's a lot of stuff that you can add. You can change the color to whatever color you want. You can add a timer. So if you want to, this is like if you have people doing work for you, they can, you know, do their log and I'll, I'll show that. You can do reports. I don't use any reports because it's personally for me, I really don't need any. But it also has like you can add tasks. So if you need to go remember to check a website, put that in there. It has a, um, with the timer, let me go into a little, that's not what I want to do. I want to do more. Sorry, add. So add, if I want to add more of a description of what this really is, I can do that. I can add a member. So if you're adding somebody, I want Corey to keep me accountable. I can add her to this task. If I, you can do a due date. So when I'm doing my every two weeks, I set a due date. And what happens is I get reminders. I get an email, you got this due in the next couple of days. Um, so you have all of the comments, all of these things that you can do. So what you would do is, um, this is something I'm working on. So am I, now this might, this is where you can change the categories. So you can change it to in progress. You can rename it um, to whatever you want. You can add columns, you can remove columns. So this is something like we have with the house. So I might can move it to each category. So I'm going to show you mine. Don't, don't talk about me. Don't look at what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'm going to show you and practice how it works. So the other thing, let me mention, you could do multiple boards. So if you want one for your work stuff and you want one personal, you can. So I have, I have one that I did for the boot camp, which I showed this. I have one that I'm doing for my personal goals. And then I have one. I mentioned that I have a business. So in my business, I have somebody developing a game for me. They're actually doing the coding, somebody working on the website on the game that I'm doing. So I have a game where I have a, a board where I'm able to track their progress. That way I don't always have to say, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And we're doing the agile. Like he just did a demo to me Sunday to show me where he, where he is. So I'm fully using it in my personal. So with my goals, this is one that I have um, what I said, I have it with somebody else. So you can see here, these are the people that I'm sharing it with. And as you can see, I'm past due on some. So I should have changed the date or broke it up. Um, and I know why I'm doing it. I just haven't updated it. But these are things that I have in process. I'm working on these. And these are things that I have that I've completed. So this is how I do it you know, managing my, my goals. And if you go into it, like I can add that I have the details, I have the time and you can add and change that anytime. The other one, so this is the one that I'm doing for my, my business. So I have, you know, the developer working. So I created, these are all the things that need to happen for it. These are my requirements. And what he does is he goes and he updates where he is, makes notes, what's done, what's completed. This is what's coming up next. And this is how I manage the progress with my digital game development. So these are examples. I can tell you that it works for me. Um, and I know I said no more than 10. So you can see my backlog has more than 10 because with this development, we're targeting like May or June. And I didn't want to lose track of it. So I just kind of did a, a dump. And because the person is working on it in his time frame, we're doing this Kanban, but I'm not working on the two weeks. So it's really, we're using this one more like a Kanban. And the other one I'm using more like a Scrum, where I give myself two weeks I need to have it, have it done. But they look the same. So before I go for this, because this is, we're at the end. Um, and I wanted to, I think I went over, I apologize, because I, I wanted to leave time for questions. But before I leave this 
page and show my contact information. Does anybody have any questions on this tool or using this or? Corey, Joe, do you just want to go through some of the questions? Yeah. Um, I have I'll, both. I'll put the, we'll, for everybody that's asking about the links, we will send a follow up email with all of um, the links in them. Oh, Capture. and I will send, let me do, I can probably, I can do the chat too, right? Yeah. I'm going to send mm -hmm. it to you, Eric. Um, I'm going to send you the, because if people ask more questions of where to go, if they want more information, then you can copy them. Okay. That'll probably be easier. Do you want me to start asking some questions, Corey? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Natasha, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. I'm typing, but I'm listening. Okay. Do you see a burnout in Scrum because it either just goes on and on or the top decision makers, if not part of the Scrum, may feel, may feel to team members like the wheel is spinning. What are the best practices to keep Scrum productive and achieving outcomes with accountabilities? Well, I think is, I don't think burnout is just related to Scrum. I think it happens with the project management too. And it's the it's what we're all facing where you don't have the people. You don't have the people. You get people in. You have to do the training. So I think the burnout is not specifically to, crum, to scrum. It's just overall. And I think the way to do that is you have to have a strong scrum master and a PO that pushes back on the business on what is really realistic, what can be done, and that you have to, as a scrum master, make time and make it a priority to celebrate your team's achievements and success. Awesome. How do you transition to a project manager? What advice do you have to make that happen? What skills or training should one seek out if they are doing something that they aspire to be like a project manager? I think one in the Q and A was a uh, project uh, analyst. Okay. So what I would say, so Project management, they've kind of, it used to be, you could do it. Some, well, let me say this. Project management, there's a certification PMP, project management professional. I am a PMP. There's also one that's just before it. So if you're looking into project management, I would say to look into that, look into groups. Um, the meetups are, are great. So if you can find a project management meetup or a scrum master meetup, I know they're out there. That allows you to even test the waters to see if this is what I really want to do. You find out about a lot of job openings before they're posted and they do study groups. So I would say meetups. The other thing is take online classes. So take online classes, um, take like Udemy, the LinkedIn classes. All of those are good to understand the knowledge, the principles, and then getting in front of the interview and being able to speak to it and and understand it. So I would say those are the best ways to get the knowledge and exposure and then find out if you want to do it and then find the people that will help you take the next step. Awesome. And then Eric's going to uh, post some um, links and those links provide more information on training and um, what it looks like also. Okay. How do you, um, real quick, um, how do you, what is leadership's, what is, what if leadership's demands and goals are unrealistic on purpose because they want to push things to get them done? And how would you, what would your recommendations would be with that? Well, I'm a very vocal person and people know when they invite me to a meeting, I'm going to talk. So I push back is, it's not realistic. Sometimes it does come up because it's a regulatory and then everything. So then it's the question, well, if you want this, what are you taking off? What are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to sacrifice product quality? Or are you willing to sacrifice this product? Because all of this can be done. So it's important to lay out the risk, important, important for them to commit to what they won't do or what they're going to sacrifice. And you have to stand on it. Awesome. And then how do you develop your matrix for your projects that you track? Um, personal or professional or both? Uh, Rinal, would you be able to clarify a little bit more if you can? 
I don't want to put them on the spot. I'll just do both just in case. So okay. metrics of how I do it. So from the, the business point of view, we're giving like business value sometimes. So they value it on a scale of one to 10, how important it is to them. So it comes from when you're in the professional, then your company, the product, the business owner needs to tell you what the, what the, um, the value or the metrics are on it. Personal is for me, it's whatever personal I, you know, I attach to it. If it's my time, if it's my money, it depends on, on the goal. Um, it looks different. Awesome. Um, can we have a couple more minutes? Dance? Yeah, I think we can do one or two. We can do okay. one or two more. All right. So um, when planning, when planning, does it have to be set for two weeks or can it be shorter for shorter, like five to seven days? Someone asked. No. So planning. So the, the sprint is always, I just use two weeks. It could be one week, two weeks, but that planning is not two weeks. So that planning is a ceremony. So what that means is that ceremony should take no more than four hours. But in that four hours, you're planning for the next two weeks of work. Awesome. And then I guess the last question would be, how might you manage what moves from the backlog to work in progress? If in some instances, every team member is working on different small or medium-sized projects. That's where you need to stick with the two weeks and it doesn't come in until, so you're not, the goal is whatever you say you're going to do in that two weeks, you commit to it. It's like, it's almost like if I promise you I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. But there are times that are out of your control that it will go to the next week and they call that carryover. So if I didn't finish the next two weeks, I don't pick anything goes from the backlog. I continue what I didn't finish goes forward to that next two weeks. The last one that I think is a quick one to answer, somebody wants to know, would you say that uh, Canvas Flow is the same as Trello or one is better over the other? I haven't used Trello, okay. so I can't say, but to me, Kanban Flow, it has been really, um, really easy to do. I did hear that they're similar from like somebody that I work with, that they're similar, but that Kanban Flow offered more options to put things on task than Trello did. This was perfect. We got, we covered a lot in an hour. <laughs> I, so I did a brain dump. I tried to do as much as I could without being over. So I hope I didn't lose anybody. Well, I think it's like, the, so the, this whole process, everything with boot camp is about just having, you know, skills and techniques to do things more effectively. And I know in this time, I mean, I'm thinking about all of the things that all of us have to do. Mm -hmm. and you know, I just know when I'm keeping stuff in my brain, <laughs> instead of putting it on paper, I'm way more stressed out and more likely to forget something or less likely to actually get it done. So I'm really glad that you can encourage us to, you know, get organized, break things up into little pieces. And that if this, you know, this is actually doable, mm -hmm. you know, if we're, if we get organized. Yeah. You're getting a lot of love notes in the, uh, in the chat list. Give her some love if you learned something, if you- um, Well, thank you. you. And I have inspired. my information. So like I said, if somebody is you know, doing it and they need more of the technical um, pieces or questions, my information is there just in a subject because you know, just put fuel or something so then I know, so then I don't, just don't delete it and I'll make sure that I respond. And you may even sure have a follow. business inquiry too. Yeah, yeah. There's somebody. Boss. Somebody was asking about yeah. you uh, presenting at uh, your own boss. Yep. We'll make sure we send that to you, to you too. I'm gonna send the follow up or contact information. Um, all of the links. We'll send that in the follow up email as long and also this replay, so you'll be able to kind of watch this back. Eric, you're an awesome. Co I can watch it back in the chat too. Can I see the chat that way? If somebody has something, then I can respond to it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Thank you for um, having me. This was awesome. Like I said, this was, I don't like the first slide talking about me, but the other stuff, <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> well, I'm like, you know, I will, you, you know, you're humble, but I'm like, the, the, the woman knows what she's talking about. So I want to make sure everybody know, uh, knows that you know your stuff, but you know, this is a certification and this is a discipline, but th these same techniques we can, you know, we can use in our everyday lives. 
and thank you for sharing a little bit of your expertise with us and we can apply it in our own way. Eric, your personality and engaging and just supportive and just kind. We're so glad to have you be a part of our um, community. Thank you for doing this for us. Anytime, anything for you, anything for you. So we post all the replays on YouTube for those who are asking and I'll send the link. Um, you can go to YouTube. And Ronelle, I'm holding you to that vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Break out your two week plan. Yep. <laughs> Get the budget together, all of that. Right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I see you guys hopping off. You got to get back to work. We really appreciate your time. I have one more session today at five o'clock, which is the parenting roundtable. If you uh, are a working parent and you're looking for tips, tricks, um, but also if you're thinking about becoming a parent and you work and you're wondering what's the right time, we're going to cover a little bit, a little bit of that in the conversation. Guess what? Some of you are thinking, you know, I have a lot of pressure to be a parent. I don't, I'm not sure if I want to do that. We'll talk about that tonight too. So it'll be a great discussion for everybody. Make sure you join us at five o'clock and thank you for being here. Thanks everybody. And you're an amazing parent, that Corey Joe. you're an inspiring parent. So thank you for everything that you do for us. I'm trying, child. I am really. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying, to, trying not to mess up my kids. That's it. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye.